The following feature piece is a segment taken from an episode of Roundup, our fortnightly all-in-one recap of everything to do with Oceanic CS. The full episode is linked in the video description, or alternatively, you can check us out on Spotify, Apple or Google Podcasts, and other podcast apps by searching for Snowball Esports. Thanks to Snowball and our presenting partner, Blue Microphones, and enjoy the video. If you're at all a fan of Oceanic Counter-Strike, you know the name Renegades well. Despite being a North American organization, their deep roots in Aussie CS run far, originating from the signing of the former Vox Eminor roster and taking them overseas and growing them into the boys that we know today. With their next pickup after the departure of their CSGO lineup for 100 Thieves, it seemed that the former Greyhound roster would be due next to compete on an international stage, sending more of our scene abroad for regular competition overseas. That would have been the case if it wasn't for the course of events that 2020 delivered. Stuck home in a scene where the competition is a whole tier below pretty much, Renegades crushed 2020's local circuit. With the brain of Dexter at the helm of the team from the IGL position, they would go on to win all but three of the 44 matches they played in Australia during the year. It was a streak that did not go unnoticed, especially by international teams looking to boost their potential for the year ahead. With Dexter being offered a position to replace Carrigan on the mouse sports lineup, he has had big shoes to fill. Likewise, the Renegades lineup was left with a massive gap, and they needed a pickup ready to compete on an international stage. With a lot going on in Oceania, including the ESIC fans taking out a large portion of the tier 2 scene, alongside the smaller sized pool of players in the AU scene compared to other regions, a problem we've always faced, finding the perfect replacement wouldn't be easy. There's a lot of requirements to fill in order to land a spot on a team like that, especially with an outgoing in-game leader. While there's good reason to just pick up another IGL and try to slot in a similar piece, there's plenty of room here to mix things up, change the roles around, so if the new IGL can be found within the lineup, what else do you need for a new fifth? Well, you need someone who is dedicated, someone with experience who can mesh well with the existing lineup. Pre-existing experience with them helping a lot here, especially in a scene as close and tight knit as this one. You need someone who can commit to playing CS full time and is keen to compete against the best of the best that the world has on offer. They need to be a smart player with a team oriented goal, a talent with the willpower to put in the time and effort to practically revolve their life around CS in order to pursue their dream. And if you want to succeed and boost your fragging power, well, quite frankly, you need someone who's fucking sharp. Alistair is that player. Start to fade. You see two trying to hide inside of it, but Alistair has the eyes of an oh, eagle. What is that? And a bow similar oh. to Legolas. He's hitting everything. By Blitz is thinking about it, but now is forced off the oh. angle. What is that from Alistair? No what way. was that? What? That is by far the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Meet Alistair Johnson, in-game name simply Alistair, a 22-year-old Australian CSGO player who has served as quite the familiar face for many in local scene. And it's no surprise that he's a familiar face, given the number of star-studded lineups that he's been a part of during his career over the last few years. In order to get a sense of how Ali got to this point, let's rewind a few years just to see how it all got started. Having played at some local landslide events, starting to make friends and build relationships in the scene, the story of Alistair's rise in Oceanic Counter-Strike starts with his first big opportunity, coming together with Stige, Inns, Urcast, and Gratisfaction to form the debut roster for a brand new organization, Corviday. In a way, it's been weird looking back on these old rosters. I mean, reading these names out loud, you'd think of players with an esteemed history in the Australian scene, where four of these players would go on to climb to the top of what OC had on offer. But back then, these players were undiscovered talents, eager to make a name for themselves. Cybergamer's main league, CG Premier, being the main focus of the team, a lot of importance was placed on getting themselves at the CGPL Autumn 2016 Finals LAN, with the goal of fighting against the teams currently under the domestic spotlight. As newer players with less structure holding them together, they wouldn't have themselves a set IGL, and actually instead let Inns, Urcast, and Steer just alternate the role of shot calling. But their inexperience wouldn't hold them back for the time being. They were keen to just get in the server and frag. Losing to the top team at the time, Immunity, but then taking wins against Vox, Jam, Ferox, and Trident, they placed well in the online groups and earned themselves a ticket to Sydney for the finals. For Corbidae, this would be the first land they would attend, and in fact would be the first land that Inns would ever attend. Alistair, having had experience playing in local landslide events, was at least a little bit more experienced in this regard. But nothing would prepare them, or the scene at large, for what would come next. From down here as well. So, tense moments here for APOC, a one versus three. We'll see if he can do it, doesn't manage to land a good shot there, and it is going to be Corvidae. I think someone might have just thrown a phone, but, yeah. uh, wow. 
wow. excitement across the board here for Corvette. And they are going to come out of Group A in first place. 16-14 against Legacy. Who would have thought? Yeah, who would have thought? Not I, to be honest. I had my money on Legacy for that map. Uh, Corvette, wow, that's um, that's something as that's well. Huge. And I mean, this is—it's—they're really the Cinderella story. They are. <laughs> it is. They I are. mean, they, they've come from well, come I mean, from the bottom. Now we're here. The whole team's here. Yeah. Like I mean, there's still a, there's still a little bit more left. With a 3-0 lead in the groups, including a 16 to 14 win on Mirage against Legacy, Corvette would go on to the playoff bracket, seated it up against one of the top teams of the time. Chiefs, an organization that cemented itself at the heart of Oceanic Esports, and a roster with players like Dexter and Bernard UK that have done the very same in our CS scene. And this is where the god run ended for Corvidae, as they went down 2-0 on Cash and Train. While Corvidae didn't get themselves a first place position, what they managed to accomplish was the respect of their competitors and spectators, breaking away from other newly formed teams and showing that they were here for serious business. These players were new to the top end of the scene, but they were ready for it and ready to do whatever it takes to win. But for Alistair, doing whatever it took to win would come with some heavy decisions. From the outsider perspective, everything was doing just fine in the Corvette camp, but soon after the CGP line, internal problems began brewing. With a lack of a coherent structure coupled with apparent issues in the scrims, things weren't going the way it seemed they would after their top 4 finish. With roster shuffles and OCE leading Lightstep out of his position at Legacy, he decided to scout some top talent to build a new roster, and in his sightline was Alistair and Inns. Alistair and Inns were caught trialling for Lightstep's new team, a direct violation of their Corvette contract. And with that, Corvette fell apart with the other players being released as the duo left for Greener Pastures. Back then I was really hurt because we, I thought like, oh, we're like really good friends. Uh, I even raged at them out the game. Okay, never talk to me again. Okay, bro, we're done. Some shit. Really? <laughs> yeah. I'd I love swear, to see the I chat. Swear, I swear, about. like, I swear I, hate, I used to hate them. Like, not like hate them, like I'm going to kill them, but I'm never going to play with them hate, you know? Yeah, but you know, after a few lines that we just had a few drinks and I like, I love you, buddy, man. It was all for passion, man. <laughs> Fair enough. Understandable. Okay. It, it, that's like really understandable, to be honest. A promising team with some of AUCS's finest talents torn apart, leaving their former teammates hurt. But from the ashes of this team came together the rebirth of these players across new rosters and opportunities. And as for Alistair, he found that opportunity to thrive with Inns, Lightstep, Tux, and Malta on Team ASDF in June 2016. While there were some shaky results at first, with a 5th to 8th place finish at the first ESL ANZ Champs season's group stage after losing to Trident, it wouldn't be long before the ASDF boys would show that they were ready to compete at the top domestically. With a star-studded lineup and more experience brought in from Lightstep's guidance and leadership, they'd go on to turn some heads while under the ASDF name, starting with a qualification to the CGP Season 8 LAN with a 5-0 placement in their group, winning best of threes against Info, SYF, Avant, Reload and Legacy and only dropping one map to Avant in the process. They'd also go on to win Season 22 of ESCA Open in Australia, beating Atletico and Chiefs and qualifying for the ESCA Global Challenge. But it's worth noting that the Chiefs lineup they beat to get there wasn't to last. They were already planning a split announced a week prior with ESCA as their last tournament to play. The core of that team, Bernard UK, Destiny and Gaza, would join James and Gratis Faction in a new venture to soon become the new team immunity. But that left Chiefs with a lack of a CSGO team. And as the saying goes, if you can't beat them, join them. Or have them join your organization. ASDF would join Chiefs the very next day after defeating their former roster. Seriously, the next day, the finals match was on August 16th, and they joined the 17th. But what a pickup that would be for the Chiefs. Playing the CGP land that they qualified for as ASDF, Alistair and his team would go on to place 3rd to 4th debuting under their new organization. Just a week later, they'd travel to Katowice, Poland to compete in the ESCA Season 22 Global Challenge. This would be the first time Ali would travel internationally for CSGO and would be his very first taste of international competition. But they'd fall to Echo Fox and Enz, showing that they could get some close beer ones in, but not taking any wins as they fell in the groups. But that edge from going global helped them when they got home, rounding out their 2016, placing strong at ESL ANZ Championship's second season, placing second at LAN in Melbourne, losing the finals to Atletico and losing to Atletico again soon after to place third to fourth in the next season of ESCA Premier. For the next year, Alistair would stay put in Chiefs, 
playing through a rough of 2017, which saw the rise of more teams nationally and saw some of the biggest changes, developments, but also achievements for Ali and his teammates. It would start with Lightstep stepping down and Pex coming in as his replacement. And they'd started out by grabbing themselves a trophy, CGP Season 10. And that would soon be followed up by the announcement of a new event that would shake up Oceania and our scene, IEM Sydney 2017. Even though IEM was taking place locally, the event was more a focus on international competition, with only eight teams for this initial trial year. Teams who were competing overseas were invited, these being Astralis, FaZe, North, Optic, SK, and Renegades, who were joined by Vici, qualifying through the China qualifier. That meant for Oceania, there was just one spot left to grab. Ali and his fellow Chiefs players were adamant in making it through to this event. I mean, with the potential to play on stage in front of the home crowd, who wouldn't take that as a massive inspiration to try their best? Getting to the qualifiers final against Tainted Minds after sending them down to the lower bracket in the previous round, they would meet again for the finals, which Chiefs would ultimately take out. For those who weren't familiar with Oceania competition and only watched international comps, this would be the point at which Chiefs would have an opportunity to show themselves to this larger audience on the main ESL stream at an IEM branded competition, taking games against both Renegades and North in the group stage, but also losing to Astralis and Optic, they would be positioned at 2-2, needing to take their rematch game against Optic in order to qualify for the playoffs. And despite their best efforts, they'd find themselves just six rounds short of the main stage, eliminated in a best of one, 16-10 on train. But even still, these close results turned some heads. And it begs the question, why weren't we seeing more Chiefs internationally? Simple. It's the unfortunate reality that faced the team throughout its lifespan. Tux, the in-game leader, was vac banned. Alistair joined ASDF knowing this fact, but dedicated himself to this team knowing the knowledge and potential Tux would bring, and that proved to be true as they got brought onto Chiefs. But even still, that meant no matter how hard they tried, how much they wanted to, they couldn't even try to qualify for majors. But that didn't mean they wouldn't go as hard as they could, taking on all the other tournaments that they could go for. They'd do exactly that, and take out CGP Season 11 soon after, place well over multiple qualifiers, and overall strengthen their position as a top contender in OCE. But when ESCA Premier Season 25 rolled around, they'd find themselves falling short of that top position at second, another impressive run caught short. That's when Alistair fell off against his former Corvidae brothers, Urcast and Gratisfaction, teaming up with Bernard UK, Prakim, and Moe CQ in the latest incarnation of their team, Greyhound. Greyhound would soon enough up their rivalry with Chiefs in CGP Season 12, eliminating Chiefs in third place to make the Grand Finals, showing excellent form after a few roster moves with Dexter and Dick Stacy replacing Prakim and Moe. By now, you can see the classic Greyhound lineup begin to take its form as familiar names start to come together. At this point, there was no overwhelmingly dominating team in OC. I mean, Chiefs, Athletico, Tainted Minds all stood up at the top of the scene, but Greyhound were proving themselves in the second half of 2017 ready to stand up at the top two, foreshadowing the meteoric rise they would have in the following years. It was at this point where Chiefs would have themselves another strong competitor. But for Ali, he kept his head cool and Chiefs regained form towards the end of the year, culminating in the top spot in ESCA Premier going their way. Once again, they'd qualify for the ESCA Global Challenge, earning another opportunity to play overseas. But it wasn't to last much longer for Ali. Inns, his longtime teammate of almost two years now, who had been by his side right from the beginning, would finally be leaving his position in December 2017, moving over to Tainted Minds. He'd play his final official with Chiefs in New York for the ESCA Global Challenge, where roster locks were already in place, but his replacement Texter was already playing with Chiefs, debuting at the CGP LAN at the end of 2017, which they would go on to win. There wasn't much left for Alistair on Chiefs. After two years of growth, Chiefs had provided Alistair with a platform to grow in, to aim for the top, but for his next move, Ali would be able to claim it. In January 2018, Ali would transfer to Order, joining Liaz, Imagine, Hats, and Sicko. Over 2018, they would go on to fight at the top, right off the bat qualifying for the highest tier tournament Ali would have ever played up to that point, IAM Katavis 2018. While they wouldn't do too much damage here, placing 13th to 16th place, they'd impress later that year winning events domestically, taking out ESCA Premier Season 27 with a convincing 2-0 Grand Final against Tainted Minds. They'd also play second in ESL Pro League's APAC division. Over this period of time, Order continued to play in higher tier events overall, pushing Ali to newer and greater heights as the pressure mounted. 
It helped that alongside the growth of Alistair's skill and knowledge came the development of the scene at large, with more investment being put forth into the region overall, including seeing bigger sponsors, investment organisations, and ESL continuing to expand their efforts in the scene with the continuation of MDL, ANZ Chance, and opportunities to pro play Pro League, as well as the annual return of IEM and Kudos Bank Arena providing opportunities for players to play in the same servers locally as some of Counter-Strike's greats, OC was less of the scrappy, undeveloped scene from years past when Ali first picked up the game. Speaking of Sydney, Alistair would return to the event for the second year in a row. They'd qualify through the closed qualifier and join Greyhound, Chiefs, and Legacy, playing at the event with the total number of teams doubling to 16, and with further qualifiers being run internationally to fill out the other slots. Here, they'd go into 2-0 Legacy in the lower bracket and take a map of Cloud9, but ultimately bow out regardless, putting up an another good run, but not quite getting there in the end. What would happen that year, though, would be Renegades, a team mostly made up of Australian players coupled with an American and Norwegian, making it through to the quarterfinals and playing on stage in front of their home crowd, just narrowly losing to Mouse Sports. A game that would change the perception of what many thought possible for AUCS. A game that brought our entire scene together as an entire crowd sheared onward, watching Nifty drop 50 on Inferno. A game just barely lost, down to a single 1v2 clutch that went awry on train. It's not something you can attribute to statistics. It's absolutely something underneath more symbolic in nature. But I firmly believe that event, and that run, and the months and years that followed, is when Australian CS had finally matured into a scene that could fully develop a multitude of international ready players and teams. Greyhound, a team that many were watching with ever closer attention following the CS IEM, would perhaps become the team most inspired to rise above the shackles of Oceania and close that gap. Having gained international attention through defeating SK in the lower bracket and through Dick Stacey's tongue-in-cheek interviews, they would become the best our region had on offer in the next year and a half. As for Alistair, he too began playing internationally more regularly. After IEM, Auto would continue strong placements over that period as well, going through 2018 with top finishes at a multitude of events. But in September, a huge period of change was about to take place for Auto. Inns would make a return by Ali's side, trading Sicker to Tainted Minds. But a few short weeks later, an even bigger change would take place. Liaz would be joining Renegades in North America, leaving Auto and being replaced by Zeph, where Alongside Ali's former teammate Gratisfaction, he'd play with JKS, Azur, and Jacob. Two talents were scouted to go straight to NA, a massive move that sh sent shockwaves through the scene, leaving every talented player aiming to be next. And Ali was ready to show his worth, aiming to be that player. Playing ESL Pro League against international teams at the end of 2018, starting 2019 off fresh by winning MDL, winning ANZ Champ Season 8, Auto was looking strong. They would just miss a slot at IEM Sydney, which Greyhound would take as the number of Oceanic slots lowered to just two, one of which came from ANZ Champs results. Regardless, they'd go strong in almost every tournament they played, consistently placing within the top four at almost every domestic event that they would play. Over that year, the re-edition of INS would prove to be a strong one as Order went on a tear throughout 2019. So strong, in fact, that he would be scouted to join Greyhound replacing Urkast, who would be heading home to Mongolia as his study visa sadly expired. Urkast would play his final event with the squad at the Starlight of Berlin Major, which would also play host to Renegades, making it through to the playoffs of Major, the first ever accomplishment of this kind made by an Oceanic team. They would make a lasting impression on many, including the owner of esteemed North American organization 100 Thieves, Najot, who would acquire the team from Renegades soon after. This massive move up would mean that Renegades, looking to keep their Oceanic fanbase, would be scouting another team from our region, and at this point, it was clear that Greyhound were their target. In January 2020, Renegades would sign the Hounds, but soon after, Dick Stacy would leave, citing eye issues as his main reason for stepping down. Once again, this roster looked over towards the second top Oceanic team, and sought out Hats, another one of Alistair's order teammates. Throughout the year, Order would consistently place within the top three at every event they played. But with Renegades now at their peak, they couldn't climb to the top, and would place second to Renegades at every turn at 2020. With various roster changes leaving the roster of Valiants, Eustillo, Ricky, Gyra, and Alistair, Ali was left as the longest remaining player within the Order organization. Just as Alistair watched his teammates get their international opportunities over and over again, teammates he would rise alongside and help build up, he too would finally get his shot. 
as Renegade's IGL Dexter would move to Mouse Sports, it made sense for them to look again once more to the Order roster. With the former Greyhound gang now at the top of the scene, Alistair was at the helm of the team trailing just behind and looked on from a distance. But now, he's been given his opportunity to get in on the action and climb aboard the Renegade's train. Because Alistair is no longer the fresh face to the OC scene that he was on that Corvette roster five years ago. He's now a veteran of the scene and one of our finest talents. Alistair would leave behind the strongest order lineup yet, having helped his teammates reach the top of the scene and dominate locally. With Renegades overseas, Order has been influenced heavily by the impact he's had, as they reign supreme as the best team on offer, while Renegades isn't home at least. And it's only fitting that another young talent would fill Alistair's shoes, with Vexai taking his place, a player at an even younger age at just 16. And it's clear that the Renegades boys are keen to play with Ali as much as he is keen to play with them. In a recent HLTV interview prior to the start of ESL Pro League, Malta said that, quote, Alistair is someone a few of us had worked with before and is such a good fit outside of the game, we knew we'd be able to work him into our silent system quickly. Honestly, a positive environment in which everyone gets along is the most underrated aspect of a team, and for me, it's more important than any other factor. It helps that he's mechanically one of the best players out there, so he can slot into any role or style if he takes the time to learn. Having played with Malta on Chiefs, Sicko and Hats on Order, and with Inns by his side right from the start of his career on Corvidae, Alistair is reuniting with his former teammates, for what is undoubtedly his strongest roster yet. The least experienced of the roster, but by far the most fitting piece, Alistair would make his debut at IM Categories 2021, the first time he'd played internationally in quite some time. Alright Ali, when was the last time you went to Europe? Europe? Wow. Um, I couldn't even tell you. I don't even think my passport dates that far back to be honest, but at least two years I think. When was the last time you travelled internationally? Uh, to Dallas for MDL, that was start of, no, end of 2019. So wow. it's over a, year, over a year, bro. <laughs> what do you have to say about that? What a loser, man. Facts, man, facts. Even though I was there with him in Dallas, bro. Yeah. He'd open up playing against the player he was replacing, with an opening match against Mouse Sports, now including Dexter. The game would go the way of Mouse narrowly at 16 to 14, but what we saw from that game was just the start of what is to come from this fresh pickup for Renegades. With only two weeks of having a new IGL and a new player, that's not too bad, especially for a team that's been stuck in Australia for the last year. We'll be seeing more from Alistair very soon, now on an Oceanic roster poised for regular international competition, and now playing in ESL Pro League against international teams right this week as we publish. Over 10,000 hours in game, years of effort, Alistair has dedicated himself to the game over the last few years. For two years, he played on Chiefs, for three, he was on order waiting patiently as he grew and grinded. We're past those chapters, and now it's on Alistair to write the next one. But no matter how many twists and turns this next adventure takes him on, the oceanic scene will stay here, ready to cheer him on and support him with everything we've got, just like we always have. As always, I've been Luther, also known as Two Spies, and I hope that you enjoyed this week's Roundup feature piece. Thanks once again to our presenting partner for Roundup, Blue Microphones. If you're looking for some equipment to up the sound quality of your content, be sure to check them out. If you've enjoyed this video, definitely be sure to check out the full episode of Roundup, linked in the video description, for more on the Oceanic CSGO scene. You can also find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Pocket Casts, and other podcast apps by searching for Snowball Esports.